Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. So today in this tutorial, I got a very interesting question for you guys. So let's listen to that. Alright, so let's say you know that your abstract class can have a constructor. But we cannot create an object of an abstract class. So if we cannot create an object of an abstract class, then why we have a constructor or why we are allowed to write a constructor inside our abstract class what is the importance of a constructor inside an abstract class and why do we need that so it's a very important uh, interview question sometime and let's get the answer for that today hi everyone you are listening to Avilash from selenium express so let's get started Alright, so now let's understand why we need a constructor inside an abstract class, alright? So before I tell you that, let me walk you through a problem. Let me make you understand that why actually we need that. What's the problem, right? So that we need a constructor inside an abstract class, alright? So now let's go for that. So now let's say the class that you are seeing over here in my screen, that's an abstract class, right? So you can see that there is an abstract keyword before this particular class called AB demo, right? So that's an abstract class. All right, so now let me create few variables over here inside this class. Let's say int i and int j, all right? So I do have two variables over here inside this particular class called AB demo, which is abstract, right? So, so now let's say I have another class over here called demo, right? And let's say this class called demo extends right this extends my ab demo class right which is a abstract class right so i'm going to extend this class over here all right so now let's say i have few variables over here inside this class as well let's say um, int k and int l all right so now what i want I want to initialize this variable during the time of object creation. So let's say whenever we are creating the object for this class called demo, during the time of object creation only, I want to initialize these variables. And for that, I need a constructor, right? So let's say I want a constructor over here. So you know that constructor name and class name is always same. So I'll write demo over here and there you go. And let me make it uh, public. So this constructor is public, all right? And now I want to initialize this variable. So how can I do that? I can write it int k and int l. And the moment I write this k and l over here, you can see there is an ambiguity, right? So it is k over here, so this is k, and this is l over here, so this is l. So there is an ambiguity. And to resolve this ambiguity, I can use this, this keyword, right? So I can say this dot k, this means this k, right? equal to k so this k equal to this k and again this dot l equal to l oops l all right so there you go my constructor is ready so now i'm only initializing these variables but i'm extending to this particular class over here right so this class has also two variables over here, let's say i and j. So I want to initialize these variables as well. So what I can do over here, so I can I can take two more variables. So I can say int i and int j as well, isn't it? So now I'm going to write again this dot i equal to i and this dot j equal to j right so let me put a semicolon over here and let me save it all right now this looks good all right so now we are done with the constructor right okay so now let me create an object for this class called demo and uh, let me use this particular constructor to initialize the variable so to create an object I need a main method so let me have that and there we go so I can write demo d equal to new demo and over here I need to pass these variables, right? So I can pass a variable for i, I can pass a variable for j, I can pass a variable for k, and I can pass a variable for l. And that's, that's how we actually do programming, right? So now the question is, uh, so let's say if I do have an another class, okay? 
and that class is also extending every demo right so let me create an, another class over here very quickly and let's say this class is also extending to every demo so let me do that very quickly and now let's say every demo has two more variables and now let's say I want to initialize all the variables which is present inside the demo class during the time of object creation and if I want to do that I need a constructor right so uh, let me remind you that is extends to AB demo and AB demo is also having this particular variables inside it so again I need to create a constructor and I need to have all these variables inside it so let's go ahead and let's quickly do that All right, so now let's initialize all the variables, right? So I can write this dot x equal to x, this dot y equal to y, and again, if you remember, I have to initialize this variable as well, right? So I can write this dot i equal to i, and this dot j equal to j. All right, so now I want your attention to look at both this class called demo and demo one. So if you can see over here, in this demo class, we actually have two variables, all right? But we are providing the initialization for four variables because these two variables is coming from a B demo class, isn't it? And similarly, if I go for the demo one class, then I do have only two variables for demo one class as well, which is y and x right but if you see these two variables called i and j they are coming from a b demo class because demo class i mean demo one class is extends to a b demo and a b demo has these two variables isn't it so let's say i have uh, five more classes or a hundred more classes and all the time i need to initialize these two variables over there inside that class right by using this way right I need to write again this dot I equal to I this dot J equal to J in each of the constructor of a particular class isn't it I mean if you can see over here this code over here in the demo class is also present inside the demo one class as well so we are just writing the same code again and again isn't it and let's say if we have hundred more classes and all the classes are extending to every demo class then we have to write this kind of lines over and over again which is taking a lot of time which is time consuming isn't it and we don't need to write the boilerplate code I mean the duplicate code again and again in our programming so there is a simple solution and that's why we can have a constructor inside a abstract class so you can see this abstract class uh, has these two variables right so Java is giving you this amazing feature that yes you can write a constructor over here inside your abstract class so actually you can write a b demo let's say a b demo and you can get rid of these tops and right now you can actually write int i over here and int j over here and you can initialize this abstract class variables over here only so you can write um, uh, this dot i equal to i and this dot j equal to j right and now if i'll put control s and save this particular program then you can see this other two classes that we have written demo and demo one right now is complaining right the constructor is just giving us an error and if we mouse over here then we'll get this warning i mean the error message that implicit super constructor ab demo constructor is undefined that means it is saying that dude if you already have a uh, written a constructor inside your abstract class then you should call it by using the super keyword so that means we don't need to write this particular duplicate code over here and over here inside this particular class again and again instead so now we can remove this initialization stops over here because this belongs to a b demo class and we have already written a constructor for that so let us use this constructor which we have written inside the abstract class so we can call the constructor call the super class constructor by writing this super over here and this constructor need a two integer to pass in 
so I have to already two integer declared over here and these are my local variables i and j so I can write i and j over here and now I'm all set to go so I don't need to initialize all the non static variables of my super class which is ab demo class over here one by one instead I can just write a constructor over here inside my abstract class and can use that wherever I need for example here in my demo one class I don't need this extra lines of code over here instead I can write super and I can just put I and J over here right and there we go and that's why it is very important to write a constructor inside an abstract class okay so there's the importance of writing a constructor inside an abstract class and it can save you by writing a lot of duplicates code all right so now let's quickly go ahead and run this application just for our testing purpose so i have already did this uh, particular uh, object creation kind of things over here and to test whether all my variables has been initialized or not i just can print them so i can write this out Oops. And I can print everything over here by d dot i, and we can have a space over here, and we can write d dot j, and again we can have a space over here, and we can type out the rest of the things. All right. So as you can see, I have typed out everything over here. So now let's run this particular application. All right. So I'll right click and I'll run as Java application right and there you go so as you can see all my variables whatever I'm passing inside my constructor has been initialized all right so similarly if I run this particular application or whatever the variable I will initialize for this particular class as well all those things is going to be pop out in my construct all right so this is it from this particular tutorial and if you want to know all the differences between the interface and abstract class then you can watch my tutorial by uh, checking out the link in the description and i'll see you there until then happy coding